We're going to have a look at diverted neutral currents. This is something that we all need to be aware of because it's potentially quite dangerous for all of us. Here we have a very simple circuit. We have a light bulb in its enclosure and it's fed from a transformer in the street. We have the line coming in, 230 volts, goes through the element, returns on the neutral, back to the transformer. That will work perfectly well. It's not particularly safe because if there was an issue, if the live touched the outer case, the outer case will just sit there live. There's nothing there to disconnect the supply. This is why we put fuses in. We need to add some protection. So we add a circuit protected conductor, which is connected to the metal case. And that circuit protected conductor ultimately goes back to the mains of earthing back at the transformer. There's three main types of earthing system in the UK. We've got the TT, TNS and TNCS. TNCS is the one that we're concerned about with regards to diverted neutral currents. But we'll just quickly go through them. With a TT, the distribution companies don't provide an earth. You provide that yourself. They'll give you the live and neutral from the transformer. You put an earth electrode in. That's what you connect to your main earthing terminal. With your TNS, the supply company gives you a live and neutral. But they also provide a protective earth as well which is a separate conductive path, which goes back to the transformer and ultimately connected to the star point, along with the neutral. So your neutral and your protective earth are both referenced to earth zero volts. Now with your TNCS, the distribution companies, they give you a live and a neutral, but they don't run a separate protective conductor because ultimately, back at the transformer, the protective conductor and the neutral are combined they thought it'd be a good idea and a bit cheaper to combine them all the way through until it gets to the installation. So the neutral and the protective conductor are the same conductor. It's known as PEN, the PEN conductor, protective earth neutral, or a CNE conductor, combined neutral and earth. So it's combined until it gets to the property. And when it gets to the property, they separate the neutral and the earth in the distribution cutout. The neutral goes off to the meter and onto circuits. And then they give you an earthing conductor, which goes onto your main earthing terminal. So the main problem with TNCS is if this combined earth neutral breaks. Let's have a look at what problems that can cause. So here we are back at our simple circuit. The live goes through the protected device, through the load, through the element, and back down the neutral to the transformer. If this neutral conductor breaks, the light will stop working because there's no return path. But if you follow the flow of power through the element, back down what was the neutral, which is no longer a neutral because it's not connected to the neutral point. This is just an extension of your live going through the element. We haven't got neutral anymore, but we've still got this energized conductor. You'll have a standing voltage. The danger is if you touch that conductor, you then become the return path. The power will flow through you and try and find its way back to the transformer. That'll happen on any broken neutral. But the fact that we've got a combined earth neutral adds to the danger. So back to our simple circuit. This time we've added the service head where the neutral and earth are separated. And we've added the MET with its connection to the light fitting and various circuits from that. We've got a broken pen conductor, so we'll follow the flow of power. Power will come into the installation, go through the service cutout and any fusing, any protective devices. It'll go through the load. In what used to be the neutral return path, it'll still go down there, but can't get back to the transformer this way. So it's going to try and find another direction to go. So we're going down what used to be the neutral, back to the service head, where it was separated. But this time it's got another path. It's going to follow this path onto the MET. And once it gets to the MET, it's going to go to everything that's connected to that which is basically everything, isn't it? It's going to go to all your exposed conductive parts, all your extraneous conductive parts. Normally this light wouldn't work. But when you think if this has gone to the MET, then you've got the connections of the MET, which will include your extraneous conductive parts, such as your gas and water pipes. And what is your gas and water pipe? It's like an earth electrode, really, isn't it? So this voltage will appear on the installation on your service pipes, your gas and your water. And since they act like an electrode, you're going to get a return path back to the transformer. So this light will work. You've got a circuit. So you might not even realize that you've got an issue, that you've got a fault, until you touch some metal work that is now at a raised potential. This is basically what happens with your diverted neutral current. The neutral current isn't getting back to the transformer via the neutral. 
it's getting back to the transformer by the network of earthing and bonding that you've got. And this fault can sit here for hours and days because it is not going to operate the protected device. The RCD won't see it. And because you're going to have quite a high earth fault loop impedance, because you've got a return path to the mass of earth, you probably wouldn't have the fault current to trip the protective device. And because a diverted neutral current can find its way onto the gas from water pipes, can appear in your neighbour's properties and all the way down the street. So let's have a look at some of the problems that can arise from this diverted neutral current. This isn't an exhaustive list. I'm still working on my understanding of diverted neutral currents and what it means and the best way to protect ourselves from them. But these seven things I can think of. Obviously, we're going to have an increased touch voltage on our exposed next journey's metal work because we've got these diverted neutral currents. We have the issue of the protected devices not operating, the RCD and such. I'll go through that a little bit more. We have the old paper insulated lead sheath cable that's been in the street for decades, connected onto combined neutral and earth cable. And this can lead to doubts on what the actual earthing system in your house is. It might look like a TNS, but it's actually a TNCS. And that's obviously got implications in protective bonding sizes and also exporting your earth outside the property. There's possible heating effects because we're going to have currents and conductors that were designed to carry those currents. And we're also going to have appliances and metering, such as a gas meter, not designed to carry any current. That could be a high resistance joint, which is going to have a heating effect. Because this fault current is trying to find its way back to transform transformer through the mass of Earth, that's got implications for any Earth electrodes that you might have nearby. You have your step voltage. We're often told now to install Earth electrodes. That might not give as much protection because the Earth electrode will pick up any fault currents and exporting this issue down the street. I mentioned that the RCD wouldn't detect a diverted neutral current. And this is why. Because the RCD is not seeing an imbalance. We're still getting power going through the RCD and leaving on what was a neutral, but really is a neutral connected to the earthing system now. The current is just being diverted onto the earthing system. So the RCD won't detect that. It won't trip. We're starting to get some guidance through if we suspect we've got a diverted neutral current. This is the IET's guidance note 3. It describes the action that you might be doing. It tells you what the expected results should be from the action and any possible indication that you might have a diverted neutral current or a broken pen conductor. Number 2 here, switch off power to the installation, lock off or otherwise secure the points of isolation and prove the installation is dead using an approved 2 pole contact voltage tester. The expected result is the test for proving that the installation is dead shows it is dead. A possible indication is the installation does not appear to be dead as expected. Or before I isolate the installation, measure the current flowing in the main earthing conductor and main protective bond and conductors of the installation using a current clamp meter. The expected result is a small current will be expected when compared with line conductor currents in dwellings and similar installations. This is generally a couple of milliamps. Possible indication that you do have a broken pen conductor, a diverted neutral, is that you've got large currents flowing in the earthing conductor or main bonding conductors. It doesn't tell you what to do though, if you do find that. It just tells you what the indication might be. If you suspect something's still alive, what you do is you stop working. Further investigation, find out what's going on. Don't start disconnecting the main earthing terminal. Don't start disconnecting bonding conductors. It could be a dangerous voltage on them. Anything that's not right, anything that doesn't seem right, you're getting the voltage where you shouldn't. Stop working. Check it out. That could be a diverted neutral current, or it could be leakage current appearing on the MET. In domestic, you're only expecting tiny amounts of leakage current, you know, milliamps. If you're starting to get in the region of amps, which you can start getting in commercial industrial, you might get quite a lot of leakage current appearing on the MET. How do you know which is which? You can start switching off circuits and seeing if that leakage current starts to diminish. But the guidance now, before you do anything, is approach the MET with a bit of caution. And as your first approach, you can use one of those voltage detectors, pens, just to give you an indication that voltage might be there. But obviously, they've got limitations. You want to put a clamp meter around your earthing conductor. 
In this picture here, I've got a clamp meter. Resolution isn't very good, but I've got a earth leakage clamp meter as well. And you can see on this installation here, I get about 12.8 milliamps of leakage current from the various circuits. Quite a lot of circuits on this installation. And at the time I tested it with the clamp meter on the tails, the installation was pulling around about 3 amps. So while you're working, leave your clamp meter on your earthing conductor. Always keep on checking, because a diverted neutral can happen at any time. You could be isolated, but don't forget this could be coming from a different house. So just constant awareness that we can't really consider the earth now as a zero voltage conductor. This fault can appear at any time. And as mentioned in guides note 3, this is important. A voltage indicator might not pick up a voltage. Because when you think about it, you haven't got a potential difference. What is normally zero volts, your earthing conductor, your MET, can be at 230 volts. And if you put your two-pole detector on a known live source, 230 volts, and on the MET, which is at 230 volts, it's not going to detect the potential difference. The voltage indicator might make a noise. I've got a little video here to show you that voltage indicators can be a little bit hit and miss when you haven't got a potential difference. So this was done under controlled circumstances. I've got other protective measures in place, so please don't try anything like this. This is just to show the limitations of two-pole voltage indicators. We start off with the circuit as it should be. We haven't lost the combined neutral and earth, and the voltage tests as it should. You can hear the noise of the voltage indicator. One makes like a warble sound if it's detecting a voltage, or it can make a plain beep if it's detecting some kind of continuity. Okay, so I've disconnected the neutral safely to simulate a broken pen. I've also removed the metal main earthing terminal and disconnected the bonding. I don't want live lumps of metal, so everything's enclosed, working safely. This is just for demonstration purposes. So you see the voltage indicator indicates that there's a voltage there. But it didn't do it that time. I test between what would have been the neutral and the main earthing terminal and get nothing. I test between the line and the earthing terminal, I'm getting nothing. And I test between the neutral and line, I'm not getting a voltage. But when I test from the disconnected neutral into the line, I'm getting 230 volts to the main earthing terminal and getting 230 volts. Our incoming neutral which I've disconnected that will be at zero volts. So that means there's 230 volts on the MET. So it's demonstrating how the voltage will appear on the MET with a broken pen and it's also demonstrating that your two-pole voltage indicator will not give you correct reading. If you think you might have a diverted neutral current in the voltage pen and the current clamp meter will sometimes give a better indication. Use every tool you've got in the tool bag to protect yourself. There's still quite a few other things I'd like to talk about, but I realise this video is starting to get a bit long now. I've still got to work on my understanding of what's happening with diverted neutral currents, and what the implications are for electrical vehicle charging. That's very confusing at the moment. Are these charges with open pen detection? Are they reliable? Are they good? We've got all the issues of the RCDs. Also the issue of electronic devices, leaking current, and also three-phase systems when you get unbalanced loads and a current on a neutral. So when I find out a bit more, I'll try and put another video together. I'll put a link to some good people who are doing some good stuff. They've got some excellent content on diverted neutral currents, podcasts and stuff. So I'll definitely check them out, the link's below. you more than likely watched a lot of their stuff before. I hope you found this of some use. And if you've got any comments about diverted neutral currents, I'd like to hear them. Your experience of them. Okay? Thanks for watching.